Now in this video, we'll have a look at some of the different types of questions you can come across in CTC Math. Now when you first open a lesson, you'll be taken to this video tab here. Now I'd really recommend you get your kids to watch every video from start to finish. It's really important that they understand the concepts before they try to answer any questions. Now once they've finished watching the video, a lot of our lessons have this worksheet attached to it. Now obviously your kids need to view the worksheet first. To do that though, we'll go over here and we're going to open the PDF in a new window. It just tends to be a little bit easier to work with this way. Now if we look at this worksheet here, it's a pretty straightforward process really. This particular one, it's got eight questions for the kids to work through. And then there's this answer box down the bottom here. Now even though CTC Math is an online program, a really important part of the process here is to make sure that your kids show their working out either on paper or in their workbook. A really important part of their mathematics is being able to show clear, logical, step-by-step -step working for any question. So here's a full set of working out for this particular worksheet here. And then once they've finished that, what they need to do is get each of these final answers here for each question and transfer them back onto the worksheet. And then your kids need to get each of these answers here and try and match them up with one of the letters down here in the answer box. So for example, question one, we got the answer x equals three there. If we go down to our answer box, we'll see that answer three here, and it's beside the letter B. So your kids would just record that letter B beside question one there. Now they then continue with the same process until they've recorded a letter for each question. Now it's time to switch back to the lesson, and then it's time for the kids to enter their answers. Now this is a pretty simple process really. Your kids simply enter the letter from the worksheet for each of the questions into one of the boxes there. When they're finished, they submit their response. Now we can see up here, they completed the lesson, which is great, but if we look at the mark, they got 87%. So that's seven out of the eight questions correct. Now there's two options here. They can either continue on to the next lesson or, and this is the one I'd recommend you encourage them to do, they can have another go at the question they got wrong. So we'll close that tab and this is what we'll do here. Now if we look down the bottom, we can see here question six has been highlighted. So this is the question that they got wrong. So what they need to do now is go back to their solutions and then have a look and see if they can work out where they went wrong. So here's our question six here. Now moving down this first section, this all looks fine. But if we have a look at this part here, that plus sign, that actually should be a minus. So we'll need to change that, but that'll also change these next couple of lines of working here. So it's back to pen and paper, and we fix up these few lines of working here, giving us that new answer of x equals 12. Now once again, switch back to the lesson, and they simply go back in here, fix up that answer, and then resubmit their response. And this time they got 100%. Now sometimes your kids will go back over their working, and they still won't be sure exactly where they went wrong. So in these cases, we've got this option here to view the solutions, which is excellent. Once again, we'll open this PDF in a new window, and you'll see that there's a full set of work solutions for every question. Now, here's our question six we went wrong with. We can see the correct answer and correct working down the side there. Now, this option to view solutions, it's only available after they've already attempted all the questions, but it's a fantastic option as long as they've followed those first couple of steps. Check their own solutions first and then watch the video again. And then if they're still stuck, they've got this model working here to have a look through to see if that'll help them out. Now, some lessons don't lend themselves to multi-choice style questions. So in these cases, we have self-marking worksheets. So if we look at the options available to us here, we can view the worksheet, but then it jumps straight down to this view solutions option. Now we'll have a quick look at this set of solutions here. Once again, we'll open them in a new window. Now having a look at this sheet here, we can see that it's still got the full set of work solutions for each question, but it's also got this marking scale over here in a box. Now that's got the individual mark for each question, as well as the total mark for the worksheet, and then how you can convert that mark into a percentage grade. So in these cases, either parents can mark the worksheets or kids can mark the worksheet themselves. Now, obviously a little bit of honesty required there. Now, once they've finished marking the sheet, we switch back to the lesson again, then it's time for the kids to enter their grade. Let's say they worked pretty hard at this one, had a couple of goes at a few questions, ended up with 100%, and then they submit that grade. 
Now some lessons, particularly in some of the lower grade levels, have this option here for online questions. Now once again it's a fairly straightforward process. A question appears on the screen, then the kids can either read that question themselves or if they click on one of these speaker icons over here, the question's read aloud to them. Now once again, even though they're online questions, really recommend your kids have either paper or a workbook handy and work through the question on paper first, then they enter their answer online. So we'll just have a look at a few different ways you can enter the answers here. So this question's asking what's its place value. Now we've then got this drop box. Okay, four different like multi-choice options available there. Now in this case the place value is one thousands. So we'll click that, then submit our answer. Now we got that one right, which is great. And our next question asks, what is its value? Now in this case, there's no drop box. Now the value of the number is 7,000. So we'll actually enter that number using our keyboard. Then once again, submit our response. Now in this question, we need to choose a number of shapes. In this case, we need to choose all of the triangles and decagons. So just using our mouse, we just click on each of those shapes. You see each of the shapes are highlighted there. Then once again, submit our response. Now in this last question we'll look at here, we can use a bit of a drag and drop process to help us. We're asked how wide is that rectangle there, but we're asked how wide it is in these pencils. So what we can do is drag the pencils over until we've covered the full width of the rectangle in pencils. Now we can see there that it's about three pencils wide, so enter the answer, submit our response, and we got it correct again. Well that covers most of the different question types you'll come across on CTC Math. Now just remember, if your kids do get stuck with their work, follow that three-step process. Get them to review their own working first of all. Then if they're still stuck, watch the video again. And if they're still having problems, have a look over the worked solutions to help them out.